From Motherwell Football Club, I'm Andy Ross, and this is The Longer Listen. Today I'm joined by two graduates of the Motherwell Academy, James Scott and Barry Maguire. Guys, welcome along. All right, thanks for having us. I want to start with the last week, and James, it's been a, a very good week for the club. Three victories. The place must be absolutely buzzing. Yeah, and the boys are uh, quite buzzing as well. Um, obviously... We've had a very good week, good wins, good victories, and in the changing room, the boys have been, I would say, buzzing. Um, I think the we're kind of closer together after this week. Obviously, we're sitting third. It's a very high place in the table, like coming from last season. Um, but as you said, the boys have like, are doing very well. And a great last week for you as well, personally. Two goals at St Man, two brilliantly taken goals as well. Your first league double. You were going all out for a hat trick. It must have been personally really pleasing for you. No, definitely. Uh, I had my full family as well, so it's even better to score in front of them. Um, but to get both goals, both feet as well, so I touched on earlier, um, it's brilliant. But I was choking for a third, you know that? Uh, I was shooting from all angles. We were nowhere near close. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was trying my hardest. And as I said before, it's a good, it's a hard place to go to, sit on uh, Paisley. But I thought the boys had good composure and... Uh, Fought well. Barry, for yourself personally, you've been in and out of the team. You've had opportunities and become a guy that Stephen Robinson can rely on to come in and do a job. Slightly frustrating for you, though, that for that run of games, you've not featured. How is it kind of coming in and out of the team? Uh, it's it's definitely definitely a bit tricky at times, uh, mentally, obviously. But um, as you are saying, sitting third, playing really well, there's, there's no too much I can complain about, to be honest with you. I just know that you keep my head down and keep working hard to try and get in the team and stay in the team. I said I would go back to you starting out at the club. You signed for Motherwell when you were 16. Is that a, a life-changing moment for a, a young guy signing his first professional contract with a football club? Yeah, definitely. Especially when I only signed the season before they came in full-time. I was I was playing pro youth and I got released and a lot of boys at the same time kind of just kind of faded away, just... I went back to our boys' club and just just enjoyed it again. Started to get enjoyment back because I wasn't really playing because I, I I never grew at the time. I was believe it or not, I was one of the youngest in my team, eh, the smallest in my team. Sorry, so it was quite a struggle at that point. But um, to to obviously get the chance to come here and do reasonably well considerably. So no, it's it's been good. James, there's a lot, a lot of young boys brought into the youth setup, but at a very early age, ten, eleven years of age. Does that take some of the enjoyment away? From from young people playing football, I hear a kid's been taken out of their school teams and almost institutionalised. Does it not allow them to kind of grow up or grow in an environment out with a football? Yeah, I know what I mean. Um, <clears throat> I think for the education side, it might be a bit of like a downfall, but for the football wise, I think it's brilliant. I think it brings young boys closer, kicking the ball about with your team. It's there's no better feeling than that. Do you know what I mean? Even starting from ten, eleven, as you said, um, but. As I touched on earlier, the education is very important, so that is quite of a hard thing to take out, but it doesn't take away the enjoyment for young boys, no, definitely not. It must add a fair degree of pressure, though. You've got to make it. There's no alternative, or it maybe seems like at that point, either make it or you fail. There's no in-between. No, it seems like that, but if people do fail, then there's going to be a lot of other teams looking at you. It's not as if my is just going to throw you away and put you in the bin, do you know what I mean? Millow's a brilliant club for that. Um, they'll offer as many clubs as they can, but if you do make it, it's a brilliant club to be at. That's what I said uh, before. Millow is a great club for young players. Um, the amount of people they bring through and sell on, like sell on is probably the most important thing about this club. Um, but, no, it's a great club to be at. Coming through the ranks, a lot of people discuss the, the away dressing room and what goes on in there. There's a, a lot of stories about that. But firstly, James, the TikTok videos, please explain. Oh, no, I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> nothing. I don't think Barry did either. <laughs> uh, you would not see us in that video. <laughs> <laughs> um, we try to stay far away, is that, don't we? I think they're too young to realise you can say no sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they should have said no. <laughs> It, it does seem, the way dressing room though, does seem to be a place where young lads get like, closer together and really build a bond between the, the guys and the team. Aye, um, well, there's, there is there is a there is a loud player in the team, um, but I, I was one of the quiet ones, to be fair. I, I still am, I'm never, don't really, 
people always say about coming out your shell and that, but if you're quiet, you're quiet. Do you know what I mean? I'm not shy, but I was one of the ones that just kind of sit back and let everybody else do the loud work and that. But like, you bit like James. Nah, James is loud, isn't he? <laughs> nah, definitely not. It's a, a successful dressing room, though. A lot of young guys have come through. They just set up and progressed into the first team. Look back to that Youth Cup final uh, three or four years ago. So many of those players have went on to have a good career, whether that be at Motherwell or, or elsewhere. What's the, what's the secret to the success there? Um, mentality, probably. Um, I don't think that skill could come into it, but not as much. I think it's all about like, up in your head, do you know what I mean? Um, I think the coaching staff have got a massive part to play in that. Um, quite supportive uh, and obviously the players together like if you're ever having a bad game the boys will not scream at you they'll help you and back you up and stuff and it's just a good thing to have as well I'm going to talk about your your debuts Barry you made your debut ahead of the Scottish Cup final at McDermott Park I think it was actually before the, the semi-final wasn't it a good taster and you were coming through the, into the team at the same time as David Turnbull as well how was that experience for you? Uh, it was brilliant uh, especially I was running about my I think it was my, my 19th birthday and that, so um, I think it was a f- not too long before that, but um, especially near that end of the season, the, 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 two, the two cup finals and that, uh, obviously at the time we weren't in the second one yet, but just the, the cup run in, in general, um, just to even be involved in the team run about that time, it was it was, it was brilliant to be fair, aye. And you were surrounded by a lot more experienced players as well, how much did they help transition you into the first team? Aye, aye, they did, kind of supportive and that, and they know what they know what to say and they know they know how to they know how to cope with like younger players, not to not to be too stressed. Even Cads, I remember before my debut, eh, like Cads came up and he was just kinda like saying just a wee word like just kinda like re- relaxing that because he knows his cell. He was there a couple of seasons before me, do you know what I mean? So things like that helped. James, you were the first model player to play that was born in the, the 2000s. You got a few minutes at Ross County and then the following week you came on against Dundee, Ryan Bowman got injured. What was the feeling as you came on for those final minutes and then to get more game time the following week as well obviously showed that the manager had faith in you and was looking to, to bring you on? Yeah, definitely. I was quite shocked when I was put on the bench in Ross County. Um, and I warmed up, I must have warmed up about five different times just because the gaffer said and I was just wanting to get out there. But I didn't think I was going to get on because it was like ninety eighth minute, and I think it was actually early in that, like eighth or something. Um, and then he called me in, and I was like, "Oh God!" So I was trying to get my jumper off in that, and it was quite <laughs> nerve wracking. But I had like three minutes to spare, and didn't really touch it as much. But I just ran and just tried to get the boys out of the park and get the win. Right. You've both played a, a lot of reserve football. There's obviously a massive difference between that and then moving to playing with men every week and a, a stadium with a, an atmosphere and a lot of people watching. Does the adrenaline go? Does that play a part in the, the process? I definitely. I'd, I've got to back that point up a lot because I played at Rugby Park before we played against Celtic at Parkhead in the one week. So going there, playing in front of like 60 people, in front of young boy girls playing against like 15, 16 year olds and then again slitting, charming that on the Saturday. That was, that was a, bit, a big step up. But adrenaline definitely does take over because... Um, I, I could have seen me hitting cramp any day of the week if it wasn't at Parkhead. <laughs> that, that must kind of spur you on as well. Do you feel you learn a lot more about yourself playing in big matches than you would playing a dozen reserve matches, for instance? Aye, definitely. It, kinda, it spurs you on. Because um, it's just the, the the general tempo of the game and that is obviously the players you're playing against. Some some people have got that history behind them. You're like, geez, well, I'm playing against these kind of players. You get that the odd time at reserves, but no, it's no in front of like a full first team team you're actually against. And last season, you would spend some time out in loan, uh, Queen of the South. How was that experience? You obviously weren't playing as much as perhaps you would have liked. Uh, it was it was definitely an opportunity. I was I was delighted to get. It. I was I was maybe even hoping to get out at, uh, at the start of the season to get a wee, a wee run it uh, somewhere. But uh, I'm glad it kind of got over the line and that. And I was able to get out and get the experience I needed because it was I really, I really needed it. it at that age, obviously, you kind of you need to play, didn't you? So, to get, I think I was about fifteen games or something. I was in relegation battle. That I did not want to be in, but um, uh, it was obviously it was still a, a great experience in that to to go down a league and get the games I needed. And a lot of experienced heads at, at Queen of the South around you as well. I definitely even <coughs> with, with Stephen Dobie, like as a young centre half at the time anyway. <laughs> Was even training against him. I used to always make sure I would, like, if he wasn't in my team, I was marking him because he's 
his movement was incredible and some of the stuff he done in training. Like I remember the first the first training session, I think somebody played a ball right all the top of everybody and he's done something like he's done like this mad thing it was like a, a volley for like this impossible angle and it's like hit the bar on the post and see that way nobody like reacted to it. Ampere jump a bit like, oh, that was a, how's he done that? And everybody just, like, that's just what he does. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was like, ah, jeez, oh man, he's a player, man. And he was like that he's, every he's day. He's played at some level, hasn't he? Ah, he, did, he definitely didn't drop his standards. And to train against the likes of him, it was, it was, eh, it was definitely worth it. And James, there was a fair bit of talk about you going out and loan and that it's not something that's happened. And in this season, you've been able to embed yourself as a, as a mainstay in the first team. Was there a time where, a loan move looked like it was a real possibility. Gaffer didn't really want me going out on loan. Uh, I asked every week, not not every week, but close to every week, just because you want to be playing. You want to get a feel of the first team. Obviously, coming on in the last couple of minutes isn't going to turn you into a first team player, but to not go out on loan and learn from playing in like the first league, it's brilliant. Uh, I think I've learned a lot from playing in the games. You mentioned the fact that you've been kind of you were in and out for a, a spell. Some games you might not be in the squad, then you're maybe making a cameo from the bench. How hard is it to, to mentally prepare yourself for games when there's that uncertainty that you don't know whether you'll be playing or not? Yeah, that's the hardest part um, when you don't know. like You can hear the starting 11, but you don't know who's making the bench. So you go back on Friday night and you don't even know if you're going to make the stand. Um, but to make the stand, your head just drops. And that's a hard thing for a young boy, do you know what I mean? Um, but to go in and out it's been good but I'm still trying to get my place in the team Obviously as, as a young player dedication to the game is very significant there's a lot of talk about the work that you guys do with Andy Bowles and building up your physique and preparing yourself to play as I mentioned with the first team and with men how important is the, the dedication to the game eating the right stuff doing the right things off the park uh, to make sure that should you be picked on the Saturday you're ready to do so uh, yeah, it's definitely massive to bo- towards being a footballer because it's it, the, as you say about the dedication when you come in younger and if, as a full time player a lot of people think because my pals used to say to me when I was coming in oh that's class a couple of boys are saying oh you've basically made it you're like oh, what are you kidding on you know what I mean you're about 16 or something and what that but no, um, definitely like eating the right things and that just it's a massive part because you're training every day to play at the weekend. So you can't you can't take a couple of days eating what you want and that because it affects your it affects your mentality, it affects everything. It makes makes you feel sloppy and that sometimes. So that affects your one one day's training can affect your time, your chance of getting into the, the start of at the weekend. Hey, how does the offer of free beer sound to you? Yes, free beer. Thanks to our friends at Beer52.com, you have the opportunity to sip eight free exclusive craft beers from around the world. All you need to do is go to Beer52.com forward slash MFC, pay the postage, and what's more, you'll get two extra free beers, so that's a total of ten free beers. Beer52.com forward slash MFC. And James, there must be sacrifices you have to make as well in terms of nights out and and such like, just your lifestyle will completely change. No, definitely. Um... Before I came full time, I used to be out with my pals every week, and to have that change and actually have like a quiet weekend every single week is hard. Um, but as I said, it's a good thing, obviously, to play on the Saturday or be involved in the Saturday. It's good, um, but to not have a social life, not not have a social life, it's like more like just take more care, be with your friends. Is it was a big shock, but it's a good, it's a good difference, yeah. And it's a testament to how well you guys have done that the Scotland under twenty one caps have. I've come calling for you. The Barry, you're the only one in our company that scored for Scotland. Uh, how massive a moment was that for you yourself? Sounds surprised. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, to be fair, <laughs> no, to be fair, I don't think I think I was even claiming it was outside. I, I was, um, but no, even even just get called up in, in general uh, for the first time. It was obviously friendlies, but. You know, see, star, star call up. You know what I mean? You're, you're away to Marbella. It's Marbella, wasn't it? <laughs> you're away to Marbella, and that. So it's, it's definitely, it's, it's the real deal. No matter if, if it's a friendly or if it's the qualifiers as, as we've just been to. So, but no, it's, uh, it's definitely, it's definitely a proud <coughs> day. It makes you feel proud getting away. It must represent a, a different challenge for you as well, playing against types of cultures of footballers as well. So a real kind of difference from 
domestic football? Ah, uh, you know, definitely because there's like we played the last game was Greece and like see the mentality like they're they're smashing us and we're like staying on our feet and you literally go shoulder to shoulder them and they're diving holding their face. It's a different kind of men- it's like a different kind of football altogether, and it's it's just a kind of football you've got to kind of get used to and try to learn as well as playing with players for other teams. Do you know what I mean? That kind of so there's a lot of different ph- philosophies in that at different clubs. So everybody's basically playing different, unlike like a few of us are on the same team and that. So that kind of helps. But if um, if you're playing against somebody that's used to playing a different way of football altogether, it's it is quite challenging. It must kind of enhance your abilities though, and your experience possibly drives you on to be a better player. Aye, definitely, definitely. It's um, especially the boys are all playing good levels and that. So it's not as if it's it's not as if it's we guys can't about the game. I mean, it's mm. it's definitely good quality. James, you got your your debut against San Marino. Is the aim for you to to make more appearances and and perhaps start adding goals to your your CV for Scotland? Yeah, definitely. It was a prime moment to get my debut for a start. Um, to not play as many games as I've been away with them, it was quite hard to take in. But it's just good to be involved with such a good player, like a good players um, from all over the place. Um, but I would like to start adding more goals definitely but from going on from a such like a few minutes at the end of the game it's not really a time you can add goals in so um, I would like to start a few games and hopefully add some goals We've, we've talked about the fact that there's more to life than just training and, and matches James I, I spoke to the manager in the last podcast about social media and he was telling me how much he hated it but thinking back to you and relating it to yourself personally you you did come under a hard time uh, after that Celtic game last season some of the stuff was just pretty ridiculous to be perfectly honest how how do you deal with that that must be very difficult for a young guy like yourself yeah I was quite young at the time uh, to take it in it was hard but that's when it clicks do you know what I mean that's when you need to take in everything but you say to yourself oh, I'm not going to look at the tweets and that but it's hard not to so I was reading every single tweet <laughs> And just showing my family and that, and they were telling me that I them. But some of the stuff that's on that is like miles on. Like it's it's crazy. Some of the people say. How important was the support of your family and the people within the club to to make sure that you didn't get too distracted or your head turned? Because it must be next to impossible not to to be affected by that. No, my family are a massive like key part to that. Uh, they actually took my phone off me at one point just because there was it was that busy and like bad. Um, but like Mullo were good for stuff like that. Like, um, obviously the media team just tell me to kind of try stay off it and don't post anything as well. But to not post anything on your social media at such young ages, it's hard for a young boy. It's it's obviously a big part of a life in general. Is it social media in terms of do you find yourself kind of having to block out things? Not even just that certain incident, but it must be a bit of a distraction at times. Uh, no, definitely. Uh, I think even like what you write and stuff is a massive part as well. So you kind of need to take into consideration that <clears throat> you need to watch what you're saying on social media because anyone can take back as many years as like you've had social media for, and it can, it can reflect on you as well. Um, Barry, there's outside influences such as agents and such like, like as well. People perhaps telling you at times that you aren't at the right club. You should be moving out and loan. You should be earning more you're better than you are how difficult is it to digest all the information that's been given to you and make sure you're doing the right things and, and coming to a decision I guess uh, you know, no, it is hard at times because you've got obviously you get people that know you best like your parents and that and then you get people that know you relatively well just footballing wise like say your agents your coaches and that and then you've got your pals so there's obviously a lot of people out there that can there's people that just kind of know your situation a wee tiny bit do you know what I mean? Nobody actually knows fully, unlike yourselves, do you know what I mean? Nobody knows you better than yourself. So mm-hmm. at times you just kinda need to take everything that everybody's saying with a pinch of salt and just go with what you think's best at most times. There's obviously so many different voices, isn't there? So it kind of must get slightly overwhelming at times at trying to work out your own direction. Ah, uh, yeah, that's uh, um but I think to be fair that I have been i I've been alright like that, to be fair. Um throughout what I've been doing because other than wanting want to go out and loan at the start of the season that I did go out and loan to just kind of I was in and out of the team I was just making the bench then kind of the odd appearance um, to go out and loan 
halfway through that season in January, uh, I think everybody was kind of in the same boat. Do you know what I mean? So isn't he, I've not really been affected too much by it, but obviously I'm sure there's, there's a hopefully there's a long time left to get in that. And and that's how we'll finish up. We'll take a wee look at you, your ambitions for the future. Barry, you're out of contract at the end of this season. Is the immediate aim just to consolidate your place in the team and and hopefully get an extension to remain at Fir Park? Well, that's obviously that's obviously the plan. But um, just to just to get in, get into the team as much as I can, play as much football as I can. Hopefully, stay with the, uh, the Scotland under twenty one's team. Um, hopefully, stay there and obviously that that helps a lot. It helps uh, to be playing international level. So you need to, need to play first team football to play international level. So they both kind of join up with each other so just obviously play as much football as I can and just see what it takes me and for yourself James is it like a fair battle between yourself Devante Cole and Chris Long for one of the two starting berths up front you've shown your ability to drift wide and the manager says that you feel very comfortable out wide what what are your ambitions you've obviously got a, an extended stay here you're playing your first kind of full season in the first team it seems like things are very much moving the right direction for you? Uh, yeah, things are moving in like the, good, the right direction for me, definitely. Um, but I still feel like I can do more. Uh, I don't really look at how long I've got left. I just look at like how can I finish the season, how many goals can I score. Um, but I just want to play at the highest level that I can. Do you know what I mean? Even if it's anywhere else or at Malo. But my main like, attraction is Malo and I just want to stay here, do well and... Obviously, I would like to stay here longer, so but I just want to be playing football every week and obviously starting every week. That's a major thing, getting the full 90 minutes in every week. Looking at it from a, a team point of view, the team in the European qualification positions at the moment, everyone's stressing the need not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but it's been a very positive start to the season. Aye, aye. Um, obviously, it's old niche answer, but you need to take every game as it comes, you know what I mean? You can't, you can't look that far ahead. Well, halfway through the season now, do you know what I mean? It's Anything can happen. It's, 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 we just can't get ahead of ourselves now. Guys, this has been really good. Thank you very much for your time today. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers.